Welcome back to my animal education series. So today we're going to be talking about what reptiles and amphibians do in the winter time. So as we all know, reptiles are ectothermic, which means that they have to get their heat from the environment around them. And like some people, they can't just travel down to Florida or down south uh, for the winter time to stay warm. They don't really have that option because they can't get on planes. Our cold-blooded friends can handle these temperatures for a little bit before it starts to become an issue. Currently where I am in Northwest Florida, our temperatures is around low to mid 50s in the colder part of the day and it'll warm up to about the low to mid 60s. And I'm still seeing green tree frogs and anoles all over the place. But what are these animals gonna do when it gets down to at least our winter temperatures of the 40s to the low 50s and even in other areas of the country where it gets down to below freezing. That's exactly what this video is about and we're going to talk to you guys about what these cold blood animals do to stay warm during the cold months. But keep in mind what these reptiles and amphibians do is completely up to the region that they are in. A reptile or amphibian up north is going to be completely different from what a reptile or amphibian is going to do down in Florida or Texas for example. And even in warmer climates like where I'm at down here in Florida, some of these reptiles may not even go into full brumation. Brumation is a period of inactivity between warmer temperatures where these animals will kind of hunker down and wait out the cold until warm te warmer temperatures come back. It's very similar to how warm-blooded animals will hibernate, but a much shorter period of time. In colder climates, some of the animals that may frequent your yard, such as frogs, toads, and skinks, they will overwinter by creating a small burrow in your yard, and a flower bed will actually be a great example of where they might do this. In warmer areas like down south here, some of these animals may simply just find a log or a pile of leaves to go under, and that'll be plenty fine for them until the temperatures warm back up. Now, these are a good example, or, or a good reason, sorry, a good reason why you shouldn't get rid of all the leaves in your yard once it becomes fall, because a lot of these animals will use those leaves as insulation and cover for the winter time. And also, if you put these leaves in your flower bed, not only does it provide shelter for these animals, but it also provides a bunch of nutrients to your plants when the springtime comes around and these leaves start to disintegrate. Aquatic turtles will overwinter slightly different than land turtles will. These aquatic turtles will try to find burrows that are previously dug by some kind of other animal, such as mammals. Or they will find a place in the mud to dig because the mud in the water temperature is typically warmer than that of the air. Box turtles in these colder regions will also find a burrow provided by a mammal or create a small burrow of their own. While again, down here in the southeast, turtles will simply find a pile of leaves or some other vegetation to hide out in. And some tortoises, such as gopher tortoises, they maintain a burrow all year long to provide shelter during the hot months and the cold months as well. Tree frogs, such as gray tree frogs and chorus frogs, they'll typically find holes or hollows in trees, and if they can't find any of those, they'll create a shallow burrow in the ground where they will last up, till, up until sorry, the temperatures warm back up. And in warmer climates like down here, they will typically find some nook and cranny of your home or in some tree and some bush until the temperatures warm back up. Now, what about our friends with no legs, such as legless lizards and snakes? These animals in warmer climates will just find a pile of leaves or some other vegetation to go and hide in, or they'll find some sort of shallow burrow to go in until the temperatures warm back up. Now in colder climates, these animals will typically seek out a much deeper den, and garter snakes, for example, will den with hundreds if not thousands of other garter snakes. And rattlesnakes, copperheads, and rat snakes have often been seen denning together. And I'm sure you guys are very familiar with the many pictures and videos online of frozen iguanas falling out of the trees and alligators frozen in ice. Now, iguanas are from tropical areas of the world and have been invasively introduced to the southern United States. Now these iguanas have had to adapt to deal with our colder temperatures. And they kind of slow down and this will seem to kind of come back to life when the temperatures, temperatures warm back up, sorry. And then alligators have adapted to deal with the colder temperatures by entering a state of torpor, which is really slowing their body down to a point where they don't have to use a whole lot of energy to survive. So they slow their bodies down and when the temperatures start dropping, they will put their head on the surface of the water where just the tip of their nose is sticking out. So if the water freezes over, they can still breathe. And then when the temperatures warm back up and the ice goes away, these alligators get to move on as if nothing ever happened. Now, if you thought frozen iguanas and frozen alligators was weird, 
There's actually a species of wood frog found in Alaska and Canada that freezes almost completely solid in the winter time. These frogs luckily have adapted to have a lot of glucose in their organs and that is essentially just sugar and that helps protect their organs from when they freeze and then when spring comes around and the temperatures warm up they will thaw out and continue on their business as if again nothing ever happened to them but thank you guys so much for watching this video i know it's a bit quick but i find it really interesting how some of these animals that are so cold-blooded and need all this external heat how do they survive in areas where there's really no heat but Again, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I will see you next week.